Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm at Paradise Point and I'm in the loft area. I have started uh, trimming the, the upstairs of the loft area out. But I'm putting uh, the wood on both gables, but I've already got this one finished and I was gonna show you what I'm doing. I've got one window, a 3030 window, and down here is the part that goes through the wall, the thimble or the casement or whatever you want to call it, the metal that will encase uh, the triple wall pipe that goes down to the wood stove. And so I've got that in all the way through and it's, it's finished on the outside and I've got it trimmed on the inside. But the window is trimmed, all the, the batten strips are on. I'll turn around here and I'll start on the gable on the other side which will be over B wall. This is the D wall gable. As you can see, I have put the grooves in the back on these boards with my saw. There's a little cup in this board and I'll be able to pull that out. And I've got a mark made here and here on the 12-12 pitch. And I used my, my framing square and I've set my buttons on six inches so that I can have the full length of all the way across the board here with my long legged square and I just got a center here on the board and marked that then I flipped it over and I came back up and marked it again so I'll, I'll cut this out and set it up there right in the middle above the window and get a length so I can cut it off and put it up I'm using six penny nails, finish nails, to drive through the center. And what I do when I get a sack of nails, a lot of times when you buy them at the hardware store, they've got kind of an oily film on them. And what I do, I just take whatever I've got, and I just put some sawdust in there and just rub it around on them. And that, that has a tendency to soak up that oil so that when you, you're getting a nail, you're not getting that film on your fingers. And then when you start handling your fresh wood, you can transfer the, the oil that's on these nails onto your wood and it makes a smudge mark. <music> Since I've started in the middle at the top above the window, I'm using the same width boards and I've, I've got my center on the window here at the bottom and I've got a mark here on either side and I'll put these three pieces on and then I'll have a, a piece that'll go all the way down to the, to the half log.
can see a gap right here and right here and the reason for that this board that my hand is on is uh, only 10 and 7 eighths and these other boards that I've been using are a full 12 inch and I was out that was all that I had of the, of the wider 12 inch boards and so I'm trying to keep these spaced where when I put the batten strips on here which the batten strips start out at three and a quarter inches so I've got plenty of coverage here with the batten strip to take care of this gap and so what I've done I've cut a little block that I think it was an inch and a sixteenth and I just got it tacked up there and I've got one tacked here that I could take out but that gets this edge here of the board over uh, 12 inches from this edge of the of the board that is 12 inches so that that will make this look the same width as this when the batten strips go on all this this gap will be covered up sometimes you got to do what you got to do all of my full 12 inch boards and now I'm back to using the the ones that aren't as wide they're 10 7 8 11 inches and I'll have to put my spacers back in to be able to use them I've got all the boards on and I'm starting to, to do my trim out I went ahead and made up the window casement and I've already got it set in there now I did not video this I cut all these pieces out at the shop and brought them down here and all I did was put it together I've got the stool and you can see that the little part that cuts out around the wall there there'll be a, an apron that goes underneath this but I've, I'm just doing a box trim what I call a box trim it's just square cut it's kind of difficult when you're using a wider board if you're cutting a 45 degree angle on there it's, it's a little bit uh, difficult to get a, a really good fit on that and this trim would fit with a log cabin with just square cuts and a piece that'll go across the top there's a a lot that you can actually do with uh, just a, a box trim uh, on our house that I built it I cut flutes in here and I did chamfers and I cut rose uh, rosettes in there but I'm keeping this a little more simple it's just a flat board and I've got it cut to length I've got a wedge here, I don't know if you can see that, I drove that in, I'm leaving myself about 3 sixteenths shy of a reveal, when I get this on I'll show you what I'm talking about and get you a little closer, but I made a little mark at 3 sixteenths and I like to have a clean, that little reveal, I like for it to be really clean, and so I know these, these pieces that I'm using for the side are straight, because I straight edged them, and what I did, I just set that up in there and put a little wedge. This was kind of bowed back this way. And I set that in there and just lined it up at the top and the bottom. And I put a wedge in here and I was watching on the back side of this piece of trim. And I could see a little bit of daylight and I just tapped this wedge in there to let close that gap up on the back side. And that's where I stopped. And I'll just nip this little uh, wedge off of there. I did that on both sides. But I can take my utility knife and score that real good. And it'll just snap right off. Now I'm ready to put these on. Alright, this is the right side. I want to make sure I do this like it's supposed to be. Get the right side on the right side. And sometimes I'll fit these down against this because there is a little bit of flex on this this little piece that sticks out my daddy I think he would refer to that as a horn and why I don't know but this will flex up and down just a little bit so you can get a real nice clean fit right here but this that fits pretty good just like it is so I can take my nail gun and I can shoot that on now I'm just covering that little mark up that I made
just covered it. I'm shooting first into the, the casement trim. Then I'll come out here and shoot the outside edge of it. Okay, I've got both side pieces on and I need to measure for the piece that goes across here. So I'm just hooking my tape to the outside of the side trim over there. And I am measuring 53 and 7 eighths of an inch light. Now what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to add 3 eighths of an inch to the bottom and then cut a seven degree angle on that. Okay, I've got my piece cut and sitting up there. I haven't nailed it yet. I'll start on either end and nail it and uh, then get some nails in the middle. I've got my three eighths of an inch overhang right here on both ends. I'm pretty happy with the way that fits. See that little bit of an overhang in the seven degree angle there? It's kind of like doing that. Now I'm ready to cut the little apron, which will be three and a quarter. It's the same width as the, the batten strips that I'm using. And when I do that, I just, there again, I just hook it on the outside of the trim, measure across there, my 53 and 7 eighths light. And at that point is where I will cut my little seven degree angle on either end. And the top edge of that will actually be in line with the outside of the trim, but it'll be underneath the uh, stool here. Okay, the window is now trimmed out. It's a nice clean look, nothing really fancy. I'm sure Brother Wayne will be happy with it, or I hope he is. I apologize for the noise of the generator, but I've got to have it to have a light, my, my saws and stuff. I've started uh, cutting out the the batten strips to go on this wall behind me and I'm sure I'll show you what I've done if you can see these pencil lines down the edges that's where I'll saw so I'll be sawing pretty crookedy then I'll come back with a grinder and I'll shape this and you can see a knot here I brought my line out to the edge of the of the batten strip then I came back in I where I have a knot, my buddy that showed me this, he said to leave the, the knots a little bit more bold and they, they stand out a little bit better. I've got my saw set on 30 degrees and that seems to work pretty well for what I'm doing. I'll cut this out and then I'll grind it. I had made a mark up here, just a little dot on the on the boards. Uh, since these are three and a quarter inches wide to start with, I just divided that in half and I came over and made a little dot at inch and five eighths. And when I was getting my length, I would just hold it up there and get it on my dot and mark it down here on uh, top of the trim and cut it. Now when I go to put it in there, I just slide it over to where it's fitting really snug at the top and at the bottom. There it is. I have all of my batten strips cut to length. I've already cut the 45 degree angle on the top and I've already cut them for length. So what I'll do, I'll cut all of these uh, edges with my little skill saw. I'll do all of them, then I'll come back and do all the grinding, then I'll come back with the palm sander and, and do all of that before I put them up. It kind of makes it a little bit quicker to get this done.
that this may not be your cup of tea as far as the, the live edge look on the batten strips. It took me a little bit to catch on to that to really get to where I actually like it. It's a little different than just having the square edges on your batten strips. It gives it a little different look. It takes a little time to do that. It's a lot slower than just doing the square edge batten strips, but I think they're going to like it. In fact, I know they do because Brother Wayne's already seen the other gable and he liked it. So they're all on. I'm glad to have it done. This is Friday afternoon. I've put in a pretty good week. I think I'm going to knock off and go home and get me a glass of iced tea.